Okay, um, the chair now recognizes Ms. Norton from DC. I thank the chair. Mr. Co Mr. Colgan, um, during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, the world faced a bleak economic future, future, high unemployment, tangled supply chains, and inflation all threatened the future of American families. But let's look at where we are now. Unemployment has stayed below 4%. For 19 straight months, grocery store shelves are full. Inflation is less than half its peak. So Mr. Kogan, would you describe the Biden-Harris economy as fairly healthy? Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. Yes, I would. I would say that we have had enormous progress in the past two and a half years. Yeah, low employment, uh, unemployment, inflation <laughs> improving. It's hard to top that. The Treasury uh, Department has shown that the American Rescue Plan led to 4 million additional jobs and almost doubled GDP growth. These benefits have also served to address historical inequities and increase opportunities for all Americans. Mr. Kogan, can you expand more about how the American Rescue Plan has benefited the economy and American families, particularly those families that may traditionally be left out of economic upswings? Uh, absolutely. So uh, but, uh, the, there were two kind of main parts of the American Rescue Plan. The first was to provide assistance right then. Um, and the second thing was uh, to try to make sure that we'd have a strong job market coming out of the out of the COVID recession. So in the first part, it built on a lot of the bipartisan things in the Trump administration. It sent out more money to families. It continued the expanded unemployment insurance at a lower rate as, as was necessary um, at that time. It also, uh, it, it, it expanded the child tax credit and kind of made it a monthly benefit to make sure that working parents were able to, and also the most vulnerable parents were able to um, help afford uh, many, uh, help better afford the cost of having children. So that that sort of stuff all helped families at the time. And then by also pumping money into the economy, helping uh, invest in the future, it created the strongest job market in US history. Right now, um, there, the employment to population ratio adjusted for, um, adjusted for demographics is the strongest it's ever been. And that has redounded to the benefit of the American people. And we see that low wage earners are actually doing the best out of any cohort of folks. Well, let's turn to another one of the Biden-Harris administration's signature achievements, the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, Mr. Colgan, uh, this bill, which passed without a single Republican vote, has already resulted in 170,000 new jobs in clean energy and climate resilience, with projections estimating that the IRA will catalyze more than 1.5 million additional new jobs over the next 10 years. So Mr. Kogan, how will these new jobs created by the IRA, IRA uh, improve the U.S. economy? Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. So the point here is to make sure that not only could we have clean energy, we would also be able to be energy independent. And these jobs are were intended to Re, for instance, rebuild if you had if you had a broken down coal uh, coal mine that was no longer operable. It was it was intended to something that uh, would be able to uh, to work in the future, right? So whether it's now a battery plant or something or something like that. So these jobs are intended to be uh, to exist going forward in terms of our energy security and to exist for the years to come. Mr. Kogan, uh, my colleagues seem very concerned about the deficit. What effect will the RA have on it? Um, thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, so CBO scored it as saving um, about three hundred billion dollars. Uh, they, we believe that's an under underestimate because it doesn't take into account the indirect <coughs> effects of the tax enforcement. Of course, to the extent that some of that gets repealed, then some of the savings go away. Um, uh, since then, we have found that the, <coughs> some of the tax credits are going to work better than previously thought and therefore be a little bit more costly. The most recent estimates is that it might still save maybe a hundred billion or something. I don't have the exact number off the top of my head, but that it still saves money. The Democrats' American Rescue Plan and Inflation Reduction Act 
are the kind of investment that the United States has needed for decades. I continue to support uh, the president and Bidenomics for investing in American communities that have faced decades of neglect. And I yield back.